Next from Springfield, Representative Fred Crespo discusses some of the revenue and spending details for the proposed fiscal year 2015 budget. This runs about eight minutes. Representative Fred Crespo, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. And uh, as we are wrapping up this spring legislative session, one of the, the really big issue, I guess, that remains is the budget. You were managing, as we taped this uh, last week, any number of spending bills that uh, came to the floor. Uh, t tell us what is the process and, and why this year are we having those spending bills uh, moving to the floor in the manner that they did? Well, you know, traditionally when we work on the budget, we normally like to work on the revenue side first and then the spending. Uh, but we got to a point on the revenue side where we couldn't reach an agreement. And I think uh, the, we were concerned that the clock was ticking. We had to move directionally correct. Uh, and we decided that we should at least start working on the spending bills. Uh, but at some point, we need to work on the revenue side. And we have nine days to do that. And by May 31st, we need to reconcile both sides. So that process is still the same. We've just done things a little bit differently. Uh, I think our concern was that if we waited to the last second to reach some kind of agreement on the revenue side, if we did, we only had so many days to work on the spending side. And I think we're just concerned we're going to run out of time. And now the spending bills that we did pass uh, last week, again, it's just uh, this is a straw man. I mean, it's something that we have out there. There's nothing stopping us from going back and tweaking these bills uh, this week or next week if we have to. But it just started the ball rolling in terms of the, what, the, what the process is, is about. There was some concern that uh, we were going to spend more than we were taking in. Uh, that was voiced on the House floor during debate. Yeah. I, I guess I would be right with the governor having the amendatory veto if the bill came and if there wasn't enough revenue to cover the amount that was passed out of the House, the governor could change the spending level on the bill, could he not? The governor can obviously hold back on when or how the money is spent. He cannot reappropriate it for something else. So I, I just wouldn't see any value in holding back because uh, once we give him the authority to spend it, we're very specific as to how or where he can spend it. So it's up to him, I guess. If he wants to hold back, he can, but that doesn't create more money for some of the other programs that he wants. Well, and as we as we were saying, as we stand here, we don't know right now if the House or if the legislature, I should say, will pass the extension of the income tax, right. and that would affect the revenue numbers. So when you're looking to spend, you really don't know what your revenue numbers would be next year until we have a determination, I suppose, on the extension or not to extend it. Yeah. It, it, just for record, let you know, in the uh, our committee in general services, we did pass two bills. We, spent, we, we passed the uh, recommended bill. We also passed a bill based on the not recommended amount. So we, are, we already queued up another bill out there on the House that bit, did pass my committee that if we need to, we would be more than happy to call that bill for a vote, which is based on the original amount of $34 billion that was uh, listed on that resolution that we passed. So you have basically a, 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 almost like a standby budget out there? My committee decided that was the, the, the right thing to do, and uh, it was a really a, a painful budget, as you can imagine, but it's out there. We do have a not recommended budget that did pass general services, and uh, you know I can't speak for the other committees, but at least in mine, we know we, we did what we're supposed to do. Let's talk just briefly. Uh, the uh, In years past, or in recent years past, one thing that was... I think a lot of people thought it was a good idea is the leadership in the House and Senate agreed on a, a spending level for the GRF, the General Revenue Fund. Right. Uh, I think last year it was in the neighborhood of $34.5 billion, Correct. if I remember. Uh, did they pick a number this year? And if so, what was that number? We did pass a resolution, both uh, a joint resolution with the Republicans that capped our expenses at $34 billion. And that was recommended by the Revenue Committee after having some hearings, and that was a pretty conservative number. And that's where the issue is, right? I mean, the governor came in with a budget of $38 billion. And that factors in a couple of things. It factors in extending the income tax. Uh, the value there, as I understand, is approximately $2.1 billion. Uh, there's some talk about borrowing from other funds. And there's some other creative ways of getting to the $4 billion, and, and that's a problem that we have. We don't know if we can count on that $4 billion. So uh, we have nine or 10 days to figure that out. But uh, we did agree on $34 billion of spending for the next fiscal year. What would you say to those people who say, 
You know, when you pass the income tax uh, increase, you said it was going to be temporary and was supposed to go off in January. And now some in the legislature want to change that and extend it. What would you say to those people? Well, you know, it's uh, just for the record, I did not vote nor did I support the tax increase three years ago. So I did not make any promises of any kind because I was not involved in that process, number one. But it's a very legitimate concern and question they have. Uh, and I'm not saying that I'm for or against it, but uh, you know, things do change year to year. It's unfortunate that the last three years we did not do something to prepare for today. I think in my mind that was the biggest problem. We had three years to start cutting back gradually rather than face what we're facing today, that we have to make some deep cuts to meet that $34 billion. Uh, and that's the sad part, but I, believe me, I get it when folks are concerned. And you know, when we talk about taxes, let's keep something in mind. Even at 5%, we're very competitive with our surrounding states. If you move it down to 3.75, that's a low income tax. When you look at our sales tax at 6.25, it's pretty competitive. But we collect 6.25, we only keep 5%. 1% goes back to the municip municipalities and 0.25 to RTA. So we have an issue that we need to talk about. Unfortunately, we're reacting to it. I think people wanted to see a long-term plan, and that's a frustration. I think if we had a long-term plan and people can see where we're heading to, I think there would be more, they will tolerate a lot of this talk right now, but we're not there yet. We're just reacting to what we have today, and unfortunately, we did not prepare for, for today. Has there been, and we'll let you go, uh, well, first of all, let me just throw out, maybe maybe you just voiced it, but is there anything in general you would say when you, you know, knowing what you know about how the budget comes together, that when you hear uh, the man on the street speaking about it, that maybe you wish they understood something more about the process that, that maybe they don't? Well, the sad, the sad thing today is that we're doing things for, for political expediency rather than good public policy. It is an election year. And unfortunately, that plays a big part as to what's going on, and that's the unfortunate part, that we should be having a discussion based on public policy. And we should talk to this, to the person out there on the street, but everything is very political right now. And I think that's what's making things so difficult, that you talk to folks you know, and they tell you what they would like to do, but because of politics, election year coming up, they're, they're doing something differently. It's all politics right now, that's the sad part. All right, well, thanks again for joining us. Great joining you, as always. Thank you. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.